there was a documentary that you had done, uh, which I had to write down here because I'm terrible with names at times. It's uh, Blank Slate, the feature of uh, indie film. So the reason why I found, because uh, I, I, I'm as much as I love movies, but lately in the last, I would say two to three years, I've been more leaning towards indie filmmakers. And that's where more or less my bread and butter has been where I've learned, I've discovered, not discovered, but I've come across a various uh, people as far as writers, directors, actors are concerned that have made films that I thought were really impactful, but yet I didn't understand why those films have not been more or less uh, uh, promoted more to be able to showcase what these various artists have done that have shown that they've been able to pull off something that I think that most other mainstream filmmakers uh, have done that aren't up to par, whereas these indie filmmakers do it so much better to some degree, I would say. So having seen that documentary, uh, what was interesting for me was that when I had heard your portion of the conversation and about, they made some commentary about the uh, the British industry uh, right now where mm -hmm. England is kind of more or less starting to get a, a bit of momentum going for it as far as the industry is concerned. But as far as mainstream is concerned, it hasn't gotten to that peak yet. But it, as far as indie, streams are concerned, indie films are concerned, there's a lot more films coming out of England. So... Uh, you know, I've, I, there's uh, Jonathan Sothkaz, one producer who has, I've noticed lately has been producing a lot of his own films along with, uh, you know, even to some degree, I would say Scott Atkins in various forms of films he's done. Most of them are independent, but then they find distribution because of his because of his name. I know you're right now you're in Canada because I know you've been living there for, for a number of years at this point. But my question to you now is that because of the way things have changed for the indie filmmaking uh, uh, out, uh, as far as uh, writers and directors are concerned, do you feel like um, things are starting to become a little bit more easier for most filmmakers, especially in the UK, to be able to get more work out there because they have been able to find a platform where people can actually look into getting their movies and then get them distributed in some way, shape, or form, whereas before it might have been a little bit more difficult because it's kind of far in between. You have mainstream uh, filmmakers that are British that start off indie that actually made it more or less into that uh, into that field, if you will. Uh, it's certainly, you know, it's a complicated question, um, yeah. for sure. It, it It's easier to get your film out there in the world than it used to be, uh, right. for sure. I mean, back in, I've been doing this a while. Uh, right. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it certainly used to be a lot harder to get deals, um, uh, like what we call like physical media deals, like, you know, even straight to DVD, whilst that was people like sort of looked down on that. Those, those are actually still quite hard to get. You could not, yeah. anybody could get those. Uh, so, you know, you know, those, uh, and they were, they tended to be where people made a lot of money actually, mm -hmm. but it's, it, um, you, you, you know, this sort of thing of like, like James Bond never made a lot of money at the box office. Not really, you know, back in the day, the the uh, the sort of the the cinema sort of box office. It obviously would make a lot of money, but really the real money came from DVD and VHS and all those physical media mm -hmm. things. When people bought those, I mean, that made so much more money than the box office ever did. Like you know, sort of. Um, and obviously nowadays that's not true. Um, the box office, you know, sort of in the streaming world uh, where everything is streaming, that's it's not quite the same. Yes, it's easier to get your stuff out there. Um, I mean, you have to be plugged into the right platforms and so on and so forth. But there are now all these like aggregators and sort of middlemen that help you do that. Even as a low budget independent filmmaker, you can probably find um, an audience. So the like, for instance, for my for where I'm coming from, the small independent producer, um, you know, uh, film producers around, like you mentioned, like Scott Atkins and uh, Scott, you know, obviously Scott is a, an actor in his own right, and Jonathan Southcott is somebody I've, I have literally made films that are on the board behind me yeah. with uh, Jonathan Southcott. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I know these people, and uh, I, there isn't the 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 community isn't that big to be honest. Uh, right. you, you find you know a lot of people very quickly, or a lot uh, a big share of the people really quickly if you've been in the industry for a few years. But what it what it means is that the small independent like British film producer, for instance, would be able to get his films out now streaming to a much larger audience. The problem with it is, and it always was, is uh, getting people to watch it. Um, so mm -hmm. just because a film, for instance, you could have a movie for free on YouTube if you wanted to, in no way guarantees. And YouTube would be available everywhere apart from, 
you know, certain places in the Middle East where they, they don't allow YouTube and stuff like that. But generally speaking, it's the world. Could, you know, you would have access to, I, I guess, three, four billion people easily, you know, right. sort of, no, no problem. But that doesn't mean that three, four billion people are going to watch it because they don't know about it. So it was always sort of that advertising game. And now advertising has become sort of a digital in sense. You know, we don't need the billboards and the magazines, not so much anymore. You know, even if somebody's in a magazine, your chances are you read it online. You know, sort of, uh, you could be in this week's Variety or, um, you know, Time Out or, or, you know, Time Magazine or whatever. But chances are you may have, chances are you would have read that online, not in a physical print anymore, sort of. So it's become a bit of a streaming uh, marketing place as well so you still need what we what you still what you needed before which was advertising you know sort of so this is an advertising driven game it's like avatar is coming out uh obviously i'm sure everybody's aware uh the sequel by the way i didn't i don't think anybody's really waiting for do you know what i mean nobody's like nobody goes to halloween parties by the way dressed up as avatar characters do you know what i mean there's, there's no memes about avatar is like this is not the sequel people demanded you know the first film could have been the first film we'd already been like yeah fine i don't know if it was quite the game changer everybody thought it was going to be but you know hey whatever but it cannot fail because the amount of marketing behind it it's that and that and that's not a film question that's sort of a business question and it's it's so the theaters are guaranteed to show it it has guaranteed marketing it's like in some ways that sort of level of movie cannot fail like a marvel movie now like any of those big tentpole pictures like a batman your supermans your avatars any of those massive sort of Hunger Games type, Twilight type studio big pictures can't fail because they're an exercise in in marketing. You know, so I was like, well, if we throw enough money at this, people will watch it, and that's true. Yeah, it's. I mean, obviously they go through the movies have to go through, a lot, you know, a lot of testing and they're studio made so that they're put together and they appeal to a, a wide population, but then they appeal to nobody at the same time. You know, it's like ah, there's something for everybody, and they go. And when you're making a movie like that, it doesn't have um. You know, sometimes you, you, when you make something, you want it to appeal to some people and not appeal to others. That's fine. You know, sort of um, movies should be like that. The more generic the movie, the more generic the reaction should be to it. You know, it's like, well, yeah, it was cool. You know, the latest like Transformers movies, you're like, ah, you know, they were, they were kind of, they yeah. were cool when they began and then they just kind of, I don't know, they're just screaming colours at you. You know, they, they you, are, don't, they you are, don't know what it is anymore. I don't know what I'm watching sometimes. I'm like, I they are stayed on welcome, yeah. I, I see what yeah. you're saying. Well, so this is something that I was actually really curious about with you because because uh, there's something that I always meant to I, I always seem to forget to ask when it comes to the indie filmmakers because the the one thing that uh, the, when I've been coming across a lot more uh, filmmakers actors in the indie side of of the industry, ninety five percent of them are always promoting the work themselves, and the biggest difference <clears throat> that obviously you know you, we notice is that. Because majority of them are not household names, and even if they are some household names, sometimes I was I'm not, I was actually surprised in the beginning that they're not getting the traction for the work because they have some uh, momentum with their career where they people will know the name and therefore they'll go check out the work more likely. But it's more the marketing because of social media is a lot more easier, but it doesn't seem to have the effect that I think people have intended on. Because I've actually talked to some people in the past where. You know, we, if we were talking about making a movie and I, I would ask them, how would you go about in doing so? He said, well, you got to use social media, create an account for the movie, create an account for, you know, you, you have some funds put aside to promote the film in various capacities. But the one thing that's always consistent is that, but we can't compete with those bigwigs up there who have the funds to promote a Marvel film, DC film, you know, some major temple project you just mentioned. So the the biggest issue is that the funding is not there for the marketing, which is where most of the money should be going to, because that's where they get the most attention. So my question to you was that, you know, do you because because you have been been able to see kind of from the perspective of, you know, in this case, if you're talking about a, a film, you're talking to various other uh, outlets where people are asking you about the project you worked on. But I'm wondering if you experienced it for yourself, you notice that even when you're doing that, and I'm, and I'm hoping you can be honest with me about this here too, because I'm really curious to see what your perspective on is here. If you promote a movie and then, you know, people are asking the questions and they may be the same questions that have been asked before, but you're promoting it. And then I'm wondering if you start to notice that did anything that I promote to, to help make this film uh, become, uh, to people become more aware of it, did it change anything at all? Because then you have another project which you're doing the exact same thing again, but Maybe the results were nowhere near the same, or maybe there might have been some movement, but things have not really uh, moved, have not gotten traction that you would have probably anticipated, despite 
knowing that the project you've worked on is very, very good and that you have more household names on there that would have some uh, momentum to get people to be interested in the work. But despite your efforts, nothing's come out of here. So I'm curious to see about how your perspective is. And when you come to do something of that sort, despite your efforts, knowing that you're doing the exact same thing, but either it's gone somewhere or maybe nowhere at all. And I wanted to see what the general consensus is for you because of the uh, the the uh, the whole conveyor belt of promoting, if you will. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, people promote their projects when they're in them at the time. Hopefully, at the time that they're being released, there's not right. much point in promoting the project. I mean, there is sometimes people do they kind of promote what they're doing whilst they're doing it, but then you have to wait like a year to see it, you know, so because right. that's just how long things take. Uh, but I mean, you know, sometimes I've uh, been involved in films and I've thought that they were uh, very good, um, and I've obviously wanted to promote those movies. And sometimes I've I've thought that the films are not so good, um, and they've and, and you know what? There's no rhyme or reason. I sometimes have found that films I didn't think were as good have surprised me with how widely they got seen, and see, films that I thought were better have been poorly seen. You know, sort of, and you're mm. like, this movie is so much better than this movie. Like, if I take, two, I don't want to take two specific examples, but I, uh, you know, everybody has seen these sort of things, and you're like, I don't know why more people haven't seen this. And there's no more star power in it. There's no more household names or anything in one than there is in the other. Um, sometimes it can just be a timing thing. Sometimes. I don't know, not enough people know about it. I'll give you a good example of, of something I do know that works. Um, horror, horror movies. Yeah. If a horror movie that you're in is good, um, people, the horror community will refer it. So somebody who likes horror movies will tell another horror fan, watch this movie. If you make a comedy movie, that doesn't happen, right? So people mm -hmm. don't, there's no, there's actually no comedy community. You know what I mean? Sort of. So yeah. there's nobody that signs up to Facebook groups or Instagram or whatever about, hey, I love the new comedy movie because it's like they love a Will Ferrell movie or an Adam Sandler movie or they, they love people, but they don't love the genre because what's funny is very subjective. Right. So one person's one person might like a, a Will Ferrell movie or one might like a, a um you know, you know, one of these uh, Judd Apatow movies. Do you know what I mean? What, and, yeah. and they might love everything that Judd Apatow does. And then they might hate Adam Sandler. But both of those people are comedy. Do you know what I mean? Sort of so they don't, it doesn't follow form. Whereas horror does a little bit. Uh, sort of the community of horror, number one, is very loyal. Uh, number one is 100% like uh, supportive of good projects. So like when I've done a, a project before and it's been a horror and it's been good, I have found that it has spread a lot easier um and and you know the, you know the millions of people end up seeing some of these movies you know sort of uh, and over time they become like growers they're sort of um they get sort of achieve a little bit of sort of micro cult status a little bit later on um and that's you know that's the way it is you do a bad horror movie obviously it's the same thing they recommend people don't watch it and that's garbage but uh, you know it, it works both ways but that if you're making a genre picture in horror i found that it's very helpful um not so much with action movies but people do like action movies yeah. and never with comedy you know sort of so comedy is very tough however if you make something funny uh like and i mean genuinely sort of uh, very funny and an audience really likes it obviously the sky's the limit i mean you know a lot of people become superstars from comedies and they don't have to be you don't have to have a household name in a comedy like if you think of like all the funny like napoleon dynamite super bad all these like there are a ton of comedy movies that just made superstars overnight because they were just and there was nobody in the movies like you know there were just they were just funny movies you know sort of um but there was no household name in any of those movies until afterwards, you know, sort of, uh, so comedy is able to do it, able to transport you from nothing to mega star. Like, uh, there's no reason for like Ricky Gervais and people like that to be as famous as they are, except that they're very funny, you know, sort of. Um, and that's that's one of those things of people like they got that going for them and people love that. And they love charisma and they love personality. But do you think, though, that when it comes to the marketing aspect, because, you know, that's a, that's one thing that I've, I started to learn uh, as, again, as the years have gone by, when it comes to the markets out there, like uh, I, I've talked to somebody um, not too long ago about the, the, the type of films that they're making. And they were pointing out that, you, you know, in certain markets, th these type of genre films make uh, tend to do very well whether they make money in terms of like as far as the the standard box office um, returns are concerned, but they're they're getting attention, they're getting more uh, viewers, and they're de definitely getting more uh, some some sort of compensation as far as like you know the the the, the distribution is concerned. 
But even though if you have like a film, like I, like I, I talked to them about an action movie, they said certain markets, especially like in Asia and other parts of the uh, parts of Europe, there's a huge market for that. When you talk to horror, when you talk about horror, you just mentioned before, there's a large community, that, especially here in the States, uh, various parts of the, uh, around the world as well. But then when, it, when you have that one film that gets kind of like a mix of, I wouldn't say of everything, but it's, it's, a, it's a genre that may appeal to the audience where it may be um, sci-fi, but it, sci-fi has this, the horror elements here. And then you also have the action elements here, which kind of encompasses all the the things, the, the ingredients of all the things that work well to make the film successful. You know, I can think of a movie like uh, Aliens, for example, which is coming off of um, Alien, which was more likely, which is more considered a horror film, even though it is a sci-fi movie. Mm. Whereas the second film became more of an action film, still having those horror elements to it, but it's bumped it up in terms of like what it did different from the first film. So it basically became a different genre. And that film became very successful to the point where because of the amount of money made, the amount of attention it got, Sigourney we got a, a, an Oscar a nomination out of that role. But it's a far in between thing when you see something like that occur. So I think what I, what I was trying to lead into this question here was that you know, when you start to see the um, the trajectory of how the market has changed for indie film, I, I was curious to see from your perspective, like what is the biggest difference? Not from so I'm not talking about social media, but I'm talking about from the dis- business standpoint. That okay, so we know that in the in these various markets, these type of film will sell. So because they sell, this is how we're we're promoting it, and we're sticking by this formula here. And maybe somewhere along the way, you may have noticed as the years have gone by, those formulas may change a little bit where before they worked, maybe they had worked as well. And the new set of tools are coming along the way as far as promoting films are concerned, in this case, like social media, that maybe they're, they're adapting to do something that's more different to be able to bring more awareness where they may be asking now the actors. Now you have social media, just promote the movie at this point. So I'm curious to see what you thought has, what you think may have changed along the way as far as the promotional aspect to be here uh, from the dis- from a business standpoint. So. I hope it's not a convoluted question, but there was, there was something that I was trying to lead to that here, which I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, I mean, nothing's changed in a way. I mean, okay. you know, film, films need to be promoted. It's, you're, uh, I think people are talking about how they're promoted, but I mean, you still need to put, I mean, we ultimately, whenever you make a movie, you need a trailer and a poster. Right. Those are the two selling tools. Maybe they have a clip from the movie or something like that. But honestly, those things have never changed. Um, I mean, that's how they've been selling movies for 50 years, you know, sort of, uh, you know, you had a a poster and a trailer. Um, Sometimes you had a marketable name in it. So if you had your Marlon Brando or Robert De Niro or your big Bruce Willis or somebody, you know, like that, and you were making that sort of genre of a film, I mean, you put their name on the poster and people go, oh, yeah, I want to see that. Or I want to see a Denzel Washington movie or a Brad Pitt movie or something like that, or a Tom Cruise movie. You know, you kind of knew what you were getting a little bit you know sort of with that because uh, they those guys seem to make films of a similar like tom hanks always makes one kind of movie yeah. you know sort of um harrison ford made one kind. you know tom cruise makes one kind of movie robert de niro always made one kind of movie now obviously they have exceptions to that they sometimes you know do branch out and they make something else but then people want them to go back and make you know the movie that made them uh famous right uh, so sometimes that was the way it was done but in terms of ha- the promotion movie promote movies it's always been the same. It's a poster, it's a trailer, a clip from the movie, and the actors talking about it. Now, now the actors can talk about it on social media, but before they had to go on the late show, you know, sort of, or something, they had to go onto an interview show. They would do an interview, talk about the movie, and uh, they would show a clip from the movie, and, and then everyone would clap, and you know, that was uh, they would talk, tell some sort of funny anecdote about making the movie. That's still the same. They're just doing it on social media. So the platform might have changed, but the way we sell movies is still the same. Like it ultimately. We still want um, the, we still want to be sold a movie. Like literally, when, whenever people die to see trailers, you know they love to see a trailer. It's like builds anticipation for the sale. Like you know that when you see a trailer, you're not going to see that movie for like a year or like six months or something like that. But you see these tra- trailers early on. I think right now they just released the Barbie trailer uh, yeah. today for for yeah. But I mean, I for, it was pretty good. Uh, you no, know, sure, but it's yeah. for summer 2023. You yeah. know, like literally, you're like it's December, and they're telling you that this is now. Nobody is going to remember this moment. In um, there's no direct. I don't think there's any direct marketing. Netflix have got this thing re- recently, which I quite enjoy because I've never said it before. Netflix released the trailer of something about 24 hours before it's on tra- before it's on Netflix, and all of a sudden, this movie you've never heard of will drop on Netflix, and it has. You know, they've done it a few times. I've noticed. 
not with big series, not with Stranger Things. You always know that that's coming. But sometimes they make um, movies and they just drop the trailer and then they go, it's on Netflix right now. And you're like, oh, cool. Because you can go and see it right now. You know, sort of, and that's it never. But then you're like, there was no build up. They didn't release that trailer a month ago or two months ago. They released it like the day it was available. It's streaming on Netflix right now. And you can go, yeah, that's great. You know, and I'm coming in, it's sort of like a nice surprise. And they've done, I've seen that a few times on Netflix. And I think it works really well because, as soon as you see a trailer, your first thing, if you like the movie, is going, God, I can't wait to see that. You know, sort of, um, definitely going to go and see that. And that's what they hope that you remember when Barbie comes out, is that you wanted to get to go, yeah, I remember, yeah. And so I remember seeing the original trailers for Godzilla or Jurassic Park or Independence Day. Those teaser trailers, when they came out to begin with, they were like epic. And everyone was like, this is going to be amazing. You know, we can't wait to see this. But we're still doing the same thing. We're just doing it like uh, we do on computers and iPhones and laptops and so on and so forth. But we're, we're, the tools that we're using, the trailers, the posters, the interviews with the actors, that's been that's the way they've always done it. What's actually uh, your your opinion on the promotion side? Of it? In this case, like it's kind of like with, with what you and I are doing right now, where you are, because I've seen a lot of interviews where you're being asked on, on the various films you worked on and you know, it's the same set of questions that everyone's asking is, which is, how did you come across the project? How did this work? You know, how did you come up with the idea? So on and so forth. Having gone through the the motions of having experienced that along the way, um, do you feel like, because this is from my perspective, but I'm curious to see from your perspective where I feel like, I don't know, I think that form of promoting as far, not to say that, you know, talk about the film is is old school, but it's more, I think, in the sense of like, asking the same questions over and over and over again can it does get rather old but then you know when if you're if you're talking to one outlet they ask you the same question then i'm looking up another outlet that you've talked to same film same exact question um i figured like there, there's a part of me that thinks that there's something something's got to change in my opinion because i don't see how this is really going to help um uh, and i mean maybe in, in terms of like how how the experience was for you to make the movie it turned out well therefore it should be a good project but if you go through the motion, going through the motion, but to say and seeing how the engine works, but I'm, I'm mean, wondering if you if you feel like if something needs to change in that respect too, not be not to not to this this um to dismiss anyone who's doing the interviewing here, but I, I'm I'm wondering if you feel like if something may have if something could change for the better in terms of how the questions are being asked when it comes to the projects because. I always this is my perspective, but I always feel like when it comes to if some if I'm talking to you and you're in this case, I said talk to you before we, before the release of the influencer. Mm. I talk to you in this capacity where I'm asking you questions about things that interest me, and then you know we can hopefully find something we can delve into here, and then we get into the project. Because from my perspective, I I've come to the part where if I like the project, that's great, but then I want to learn about the journey to the project, but I also want to learn about the person's journey, like their actual. Uh, how how they are, how they conduct themselves. Because if I can connect with them with their work, can I connect with them outside of the work? Because I want to be able to see um, what I could connect with that, that for me to be able to be anticipating what else they could do. Because there's a lot of actors out there that I've that I've come across that are really good at their job, but for some reason I'm just not a fan of them as maybe as a person for one reason or another. And then the anticipation for me isn't as high as it was as it will be for let's say uh, another actor that I am a big fan of. In this case, I say Scott Atkins. I'm a big fan of him. I like him because as a person, he seems really funny. Um, I, I, he seems really easygoing. So there's a connection in that respect, even though I don't know the guy. But when I watch his movie, it's consistent all, all across the board when it comes to that. So for me, that's my way of wanting to check out the, the, the film or the project because of who the person is that I got to know as a person in listening to the conversation. But if I hear them talking about it through, well, tell me what it's like to work with Steven Spielberg. I'm not going to learn anything from them because I think a lot of those answers tend to be, not always, more generic whether i don't where I, I can't learn from them so i'm curious to see about how you feel like how that may how things could be probably change if you feel like if it's th that whole redundancy may become uh, a thing where you know th these questions aren't helping to promote the film uh but maybe a different a form of conversation to help promote the film will probably uh, enhance it for everyone to want to listen to the conversation and therefore be interested as a result of the conversation to check out the said project I mean, you know, you, when you're talking about the the projects, you know, sort of, um, it, it, again, it's a project by project time. Sort of, so right. if somebody's on a, an interview show or something like that, and they're talking about a project, I mean, obviously, 
the questions have to relate. So there's a problem with it going, oh, well, they're the same questions. You're like, well, I mean, what different questions could you ask? Imagine you've just done a Steven Spielberg movie. What different way could you say, what was it like working with Steven Spielberg? Because right. people do want to know that information. Will it make you want to watch the film? Maybe not. I don't know, because obviously you might, you might that might not sell the movie particularly it might not be any interest in it but it is the i guess it's the obvious question but it, it'd be it would seem if somebody for instance had worked with steven spielberg and at, at no point during the interview did the interviewer ask them what was it like working with spielberg i'd almost go well, like how did that guy not ask that question that's like you know that would be that would be criminal not to answer that um whenever i've been in like larger budget movies and there's been like a household name in it in the interview, they always ask about what was it like doing a movie yeah. with you, you know, or and sort of, and you know, that's what they want. They want you to talk about that, you know. So, but anyway, it's it's good for the movie, you know. Sort of, if you remind people that that guy or that girl is in it or whatever, um, that's that's kind of how they could do it. I don't know the answers to how they could do it any differently, um, because people are interested in people. They're not really interested in the film. Not really. They're interested in the story. Remember, when every time you're saying something, you're not really selling them something. You're selling them an, uh, an idea, like a story, an experience yeah. or something, you know. So mm-hmm. films are the one thing we spend money on where it doesn't really enrich us. It actually takes up our time. If for anything else, we charge time for it. You know what I mean? If you go and sit at a restaurant, you get charged to sit there. You want to go to a bar and have a drink, you get charged to sit there and have it. The cinema is the only thing that you put money into that you expect somebody literally to waste your time in some way, you know, sort of um, <laughs> you, you you pay for it the other way around. Any other time we would bill someone. It's like, if I'm going to, if you're going to take up two hours of my time, I'm going to invoice you, you know, sort of, or you're going to pay for it. Uh, the, the movies are the, uh, the backwards. It's like, we literally would pay for someone to take up our time. We know that it's time, you know, so we're not paying for a service. We're not. We're paying for an experience, entertainment. We're literally paying for someone to eat up our time. Any other, to, any other prize, we wouldn't do that. Do you, but do you? Th- but when you th- when you started going through that for yourself, what, going through the the questions that I've asked about the projects that you're working on, I mean, did did at any point? Because I'm assuming that when you first started, that it was exciting, and then now you've done it on more than one occasion. Um, you've obviously got accustomed to it, but. That at any point uh, when you start being asked these questions again and again and again through you know throughout the entirety of the day or parts of the week whatever the case may be did you ever feel like um, uh, this is not doing it for me anymore because I can't as much as I and did enjoy my experience on the set but having the same questions asked to me again and again it's starting to get a little tiring and therefore my enthusiasm to give the answer isn't there anymore so I'm, I'm curious to be how for yourself how you deal with that when it comes to that roadblock that you come to that point where you realize. I've had enough of it, at least at that point. Uh, I mean, if if I didn't want to do an interview, I wouldn't do it anyway. Um, oh, okay. But if, if it was for a project I didn't particularly like, for instance, and there has been one or two, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't do. I just wouldn't do it as a. You know, every for me, it doesn't get boring because every film is a different experience. You know, so it's not uh, people are asking the same questions, I guess, but they're asking about different films, and you know, they're, they're going, "Well, you've done these sort of horror films before," and you're like, "Every film I've done is very different." They might look the same, they might sound the same, but my experience in making them has always usually been vastly different every time. Like, even if it's a sequel to a movie, do, do you know what I mean? I've had a very different experience on movie one as I have on movie two or three, you know, sort of. Um, so, to be honest, when people ask me the questions, the answer is always slightly different. Yes, we're still talking about the same questions, but, you know, the people that I've worked with are usually different. Um my experience has definitely been different, you know, sort of, uh, there's no one, uh, that's what's, I'm very lucky to be li- live the life I live, um, because um, I do, you know, we do a job that changes every day. It isn't actually the same. Yes, you're always filming and stuff like that, but you're filming a very different thing every day. Your characters are very different. Some of them are very over the top. Some of them are much more realistic. Um, and it, each role, each project requires something very different of you. Uh, even if it's the same, even if it's just another horror movie, you know, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, but there isn't really just another horror movie. Everything is very, very different. I mean, I've, may I've done everything, but the last couple of things I've done, you know, in horror wise, are the influencer, which you know about, uh, which was a lot of work behind a mask, you know, sort yeah. of. And the last, I've not done that before. I actually, done a lot of stuff behind a mask, so it's actually quite difficult to. You're like, ah, you, it, you realize it's a bit more about body language if you want to threaten someone and stuff like that. Um, my last thing I did before horror but before that was a movie called butchers which was like you know people that lived in the woods and the one before that i was playing a santa claus that was deranged yeah. you know like those are all horror movies and they're all on my very recent uh things but they're all very you know playing santa claus is not the same as playing uh charles and the influencer you know it's these are very very different things um even if they all fit into the horror bracket 
do you uh, when you when you're looking into because I'm assuming because the thing is that with you, uh, you've actually been um, trying to get a, a number a number of projects. So many of which you have directed, you've helped produce, uh, write, and obviously had started or co started whatever the case may be. Uh, so in a lot of ways, it seems like you've taken you've taken a lot of uh, control of more or less your destiny, if you will, where you are getting the projects uh, started for yourself, and then you know with the connection you've had and people you've worked with here. That's also been able to help you to be able to get, I would imagine, most of not all these projects to get off the ground, you know, maybe some longer than others. But when you start to, um, when you went through the initial phases as far as like you having go through auditions and now you're actually more or less taking control of the projects you're working on here, um, do you have a goal in mind as far as like what it is you're looking to do? For, so for example, like if you worked on a, a, a set of dramatic films, and then all of a sudden you realize, you know, I want to do more of this genre now because I've already have added my, my experience here. Therefore, I want to try this genre next. And if you guys are getting, uh, if, if your managers or agents are saying to you, there's an audition for these said roles uh, for this respective genre here, I'm going to take that. And meanwhile, since I've already done enough of these genres, um, let's put this as a, as a secondary, but put these guys as primary for me too. So I'm curious to see about what your thought process is as far as what you look for, or is it just whatever comes out, whatever you connect with here, that's what I'm going to go with. I mean, definitely there's a connection thing. Um, so there's no, I wouldn't say that I exclusively uh, like horror movies, although I do enjoy the horror audience. I'll, I'll be totally honest with you, mate. I don't watch a lot of horror movies. Like mm. if it was up to me and I was watching movies, I don't know if I'd sit down and watch a horror movie. I like, I love science fiction movies, um, but I know that they're very difficult to make. Uh, so mm. it's, it's weird. The movie I like to watch is not necessarily the movie I'd like to make um, because horror is... Um, if you, the more you understand about what you're doing, the more you've done it, the more experienced you are, that sometimes the easier it gets, you know, so it's like any muscle you use, it's, it sort of gets a little easier to do it after you've done it, you know, 40 or 50 times. <laughs> um, so that with that in mind, like uh, you have to know uh, what you connect with to go, is this a good idea? Is this a good story? And then you have to take sort of responsibility for it. I don't like actors that don't take responsibility for what they're doing so they go oh well this is you know I, I just read the lines like this isn't my script i you know i just read whatever they sent me um and they're like okay but i mean you should give a shit in some ways it was like like i mean if a line doesn't sound right to you or there's something you like the project but you there's something kind of right just won't say it you know so you know sort of go hey uh work it's just a collaborative process so you should work with it you know sort of and say it's creative you know people want creative input so you're like, yeah, man, I feel like I would do this or I feel like this should happen. And here's why, you know, sort of obviously there's a cost, you know, to a lots of these things. But, you know, when you're uh, in the early stages in whilst you're, you know, they're sending you script revisions and um, you're still talking in rehearsals and stuff like that. There is no cost, you know, sort of it's like, well, they can do anything still. It's not like they booked a lot of this stuff. Um, so in that process, you know, you, you get to you get to understand people, you get to work with directors and you know, writers and stuff like that. And that's always good. And they take your inputs and, uh, you know, or they don't, you know, sort of, uh, they don't have to, uh, or they don't, you know, they don't have to agree with what you're saying, you know, so maybe they, they can take it, but they don't have to agree with it. Uh, and if you just have to decide when you're looking for your project, do I want to do this? Is this the thing that I want to do next? Um, and there can be a variety of reasons for that. Like um, I just did a, a show with a very big actor um, and the, I did one episode of the show and I did one episode just because this guy was in it. And I really didn't care about much, except I was like, is my scene with him, you know, the big, the big name. And they're like, yes. And I was like, then yes, I'll be there. I'll see you there. You know, sort of, uh, or I did, um, you know, yeah, I, I did these, all these things, you know, sort of when I'm on big shows, you, you just do one episode, but you do one episode because I really like the show, you know, sort of, right. I was like, I'll do one episode of this show because I really like the show. Uh, so I want to be in the show just to want to be in it, basically, you know, sort of. Um, and then, so you're looking, when, when you're saying, when you look at it, each thing that they send you is very different. Your agent sends you a lot of stuff or or usually, not even your agent, sometimes people I know, I know quite a lot of producers and stuff and they send you scripts, they send you ideas, you know, sort of. Um, and you just, you decide, I guess, if you if, if that's the movie you want to make, if that's the you know project you're going to do because it's going to take, a month of your life to film it, you know, so, so you can only do so many of these things. And then it depends on, I don't know, some of these things are like crazy, you know, sort of like you can have jobs offered to you in Argentina or, you know, Australia or 
<laughs> one of these places and you're like, maybe I want to go to Australia for a month, you know, or maybe I want to go to the Antarctic for a month, you know, and then that's the, <laughs> that's the, and you go, well, you know what, I'll never get to go there again. So uh, probably, yeah, you know, so I'll probably do that. <laughs> so when it comes to your, um, the decision making process here, because again, now that you've uh, obviously if you've directed films, uh, you've done um, you've written, you've written films as well, and you've also produced and starred and so on and so forth. Has anything changed for you about how you uh, go about your decision making process? Even so, for example, like if someone because you kind of, you really you answered my question, but I, I think I'm more leaning towards the business side of it too. Where if you're taking on a project, uh, um, obviously you ha I know you have to connect with the, you you would have to connect with the story, and obviously it's not exclusive to you. But when you're looking to start a project and you're passionate about the story, because uh, for example with Riot, I do know that when it came to that particular film, uh, that wasn't a project that you were initially thinking about directing it kind of more or less kind of came by chance and it the circumstances led you to direct the film and because you had experiences working on various sets you had some great people to work around with you to be able to get the vision that you wanted i'm wondering that you know from not necessarily from that experience but from er other areas of the of the industry where you had experiences where you notice how certain things work and because you dealt with it all in some way or shape or form that because you've been through through it here has your thought process change about how you look at a certain role. I mean, apart from the fact that if someone says, Hey, there's a TV show with this actor, you love the actor, maybe not be a fan of the show, but you know that you want to work with the actor. Don't really care for what the scene is about. As long as you get to work with them, there's those exceptions, but anything else outside of that, is there, is there something about how you go out and make that decision for um, the project you want to work on, how it's going to be put together. And then at the same time, the conferences have to be made because of the various things that comes with that too. Because I think that's another thing with a lot of people may understand that you may be passionate about something, but as, as passionate as you are with it, there are compromises that come with it where some things you may want to pursue may no longer be, avail be uh, available. So therefore you have to make adjustments along the way and then still maintain that same enthusiasm, even though a good chunk of whatever you're passionate about has taken away from you, but you still have the ability to get the job done despite some limitations that may come with that. So I hope that's not convoluted, but I, I hope you understand where I'm coming from with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it changes though with everything. It changes with every project. So it's, um, you know, it's hard to talk about it generically because every right. project is very different. And that's the problem. Like you said, there's lots of exceptions to any rule I would say right now. Yes, I think the thing that I've noticed, like in other aspects on other films, is that. Um, you know, it's cohesiveness, right? right. It's of collaboration. So whatever the project is, you have to agree, or everybody in the room has to agree the project that they're making. If one person, one department, one art director, one writer, one director, one producer, isn't really uh, in sync with everybody, then it, it kind of, it, it's a problem, you know, sort of because then there's sort of like a fight about what is it we're creating? Like, this doesn't have to mean that it's... um that what you're doing is a masterpiece, but it, everybody has to agree what it is you're doing. Now, sometimes the easiest movies to do those things or the easiest projects to do those things on are, are sequels because everybody saw the first one. You know, that anyone that's involved with it wants to make a sequel, they go, ah, oh, they saw the first one. So when you come to make the second one or a sequel, you um, cohesiveness is a lot easier because people go, yeah, we've seen the second one. We know what this is about. You know, we know what they're trying to do, the type of movie they're trying to make. Um, whereas sometimes you get a movie and somebody wants to do a horror movie, but then they don't want, you know, one producer doesn't want too much gore or one producer wants a lot of gore. And they go, hey, I want to see blood everywhere, you know, or something like that. And then, but one producer doesn't want that. And then one, the director wants to make it a little funny, you know, sort of, um, he wants to do that sort of diehard thing of like making the bad guy funny, you know, and then some guys know I want the guy to be dead serious and a monster and, and so on and so forth. Um, you, you know, and that's the, those things come up a lot, you know, sort of, and if you don't have cohesiveness with the people that are making the movie, it is very difficult to make the movie without problems. Or the, or the TV show or whatever it is. Um, and that's something I saw on other sets, um, other experiences, whether I've been directing, I've directed some stuff that I'm not in, um, you know, so I've directed some movies yeah. before like that, um, or, or, you know, or TV or stuff like that. And if if not everybody agrees with you or not everybody understands what it is you're doing, it, it slows you down. It can be difficult. And then you have to explain it and you have to win over the crowd you know, sort of uh, so that everybody gets it and nobody is working against you. Because to be honest, all these things are very, very hard to do. 
And even if everybody agrees in the room, it's still hard to do. You know, so everybody agrees about exactly what it is they're doing. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it. It just means you don't have to convince people that that's what you're doing. Um, so that's uh, that's how that gets easier slash harder at the same time. For you, what's actually when you know because you've actually been through the um, you know, you've, you've done various uh, aspects of the industry as far as the writing, directing, acting, and so on. Um, have you started to learn more about yourself as far as what you like more, more than the other, or is again is it just one of those situations? It just depends on the project where you know I prefer to act over this, but I, if I could direct, I would rather do that as well. So I'm just curious to see about if you notice a lot about yourself along the way when it came to how you may have um, perceived one thing and because of these set experiences have been able to change your perception about how you look at certain things along the way. Because um, because I would imagine that when it comes to the various projects you've worked on, whether you are the director, the writer, the producer, or you're just only the actor, if if you have a preference of doing one over the other, now that you've had pretty much run the gamut, if you will, as far as what um, the various type of positions that come with this industry that people can do in all, all at once or one at a time or twice at a time or whatever the case may be. Uh, I mean, I don't pick a, a like, I mean, obviously I, I came into this business as an actor. So right. uh, I suppose that's my, that's definitely where I sit most comfortably. Um, so, but it, I mean, again, project by project, right. you know, sometimes I wouldn't, I wouldn't force myself into a role. I don't think I belonged in. Like when I was younger, actor i probably would have done that sort of but now if somebody came along to me and said now i go hey we want you to play a soldier i'd be like okay i'm not really yeah it's not really me or an athlete i'll be like well i'm not an athlete you know sort of so i said so I, I would be like i would reject that and go hey no thank you and as i go oh we think you could do it and I'd be like it, it's uh, i wouldn't be i don't feel like i could flex in that direction and that's you know that's fine i was like everybody has their thing i think it's really silly when people try to try to do that sort of thing they shoehorn themselves and people go well you're an actor so you're fa-. and you're like you you know that, that, this is the problem with people not understanding what it is you do sometimes it's like you are an actor but you're still i'm still a 40 year old guy you know sort of so i'm not gonna be a, a soldier you know so that's okay i don't want it that's that's not what i want i wouldn't feel like i could do a good job at that and if i ultimately maybe somebody would be crazy enough to give me that role but if they did, I wouldn't do a good job of it, which ultimately would make me go, ah, you know, I shouldn't have taken that because I look silly doing it because it's not it's not very convincing. And if you don't look convincing, I mean, what's the point in doing it? Uh, so, you know, and really, I don't want to I don't want to try and look like the role. I want to kind of concentrate on the character. So, you know, like if somebody goes, yeah, you know, like you could do play an athlete. I guess you just have to go to the gym for six months and get into And you're like, I'm sure I'm sure you could do all that. But now I'm thinking about how to physically uh, become, look more like what I need to be rather than sort of just think about the character and think about what, it, what the movie's doing. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, you could do it, but you'd be forcing it. And I, we've all seen, I think, movies where actors have sort of taken roles that they don't really belong in, you know, sort of... Yeah. Uh, I'm always, I always think when somebody asked me about this, and I really like this guy, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, was in Gangs of New York. Yeah. Now, Gangs of New York had a whole, was about a whole lot of tough guys, you know, yeah. and then Leonardo DiCaprio was in the middle of it, right? And obviously, Leonardo DiCaprio was in the middle of it because he sold tickets and he's, you know, business wise, that made a yeah. sense. But they surrounded him with actors who were incredible character actors, and he just looked a little lost. Um, you know, because he's like, and, and and it's still a great movie. I really like the movie. Yeah. But you know, DiCaprio looks slightly out of place. Now, obviously, they have him as the guy that arrives in, and he is slightly out of place. But he doesn't look like he belongs with all the other people, sort of. So, and that that, but that's how they make the story work, which is fine. They kind of dress it into the story. But he's like, they're supposed to be. We're supposed to believe at some point that he's a tough guy and he's a fighter. And you're like, well, okay, Leonardo DiCaprio has a lot of things, but he's not a fighter. He's not a street fighter. You know, sort of. So we're not. You know, the fact that we tried to make him that in that movie is a little. Like, I don't know, you know, sort of. Um, it feels out of place. Now the movie's good, you know, sort of. So it doesn't matter, you know. So and they made, they tried and dressed in reasons why he is the way he is and stuff right. like that. And he's the guy from the outside. He's a fish out of water. So you like, I mean, they try and make it like that. So, but ultimately, you're like, if Leonardo DiCaprio really came up against Daniel Day Lewis, he'd be dead, you know. Sort of. It's just like it's, um, you know, he didn't look like he would be able to, you know, touch any of those guys. <laughs> so, so. Have you ever uh, taken on a project um, where, let's say, for example, you you took on a project that maybe you know you were excited for the role, you 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 went through the motions finished the production and you weren't you didn't think you were very good at it 
And then when you saw the movie, you realized, you know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, or a film that you, you did and you thought I was great. I was prepared. I did everything right. And then you watch, you realize, no, nah, it was not as good as I thought it was. So yeah. <laughs> There's definitely times both of those things have happened. Um, okay. But, you know, but they can be for differing reasons. Right. So sometimes you're like, oh, I did, you know, I did a really good job there. You know, no problem. And then you see the movie and you're like, the movie's not very good. And <laughs> you're like, it can be anything to do with, like, the lighting. The, do you know what I mean? Sort of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. something about the way the movie's filmed or the music or something that puts you off and going, ah, something doesn't feel right here. And so, and it mars my enjoyment of the movie. You know, sort of like like lots of people. Sometimes they they just don't like a movie, and they're not able to tell you why. You know, so they go, yeah, yeah, it was all right. You know, so then they just you know they do that. It doesn't make a bit of an impact on you. And other times I've been doing movies where I've been like, I've not really cared about the movie to be honest too much, and I've just kind of done, I've not done what I thought was an amazing job. And then when I saw the movie, you're like, oh, it was pretty good. You know, sort of. Um, and really, what I mean is obviously the movie's pretty good, and I fit into it okay. You know, right. sort of. Um, it's um it's one of those things you know sort of and i was like oh well you know as people go well yeah, man that was really good you're like what they mean is the movie is really good obviously when i you know some of my you know people come and say it to me obviously they're saying it go oh you were in that movie that movie was really good they're not then sort of giving you the compliment and the movie at the same time you know sort of right. uh, but often they can be like oh i saw simon i saw that movie it wasn't very good you know you weren't bad but the movie wasn't you know sort of and they you because they yeah. come at it like that they're sort of being nice to you a little bit and often that's that's probably true as well as like they get, maybe you're not the problem with the movie just the movie isn't that well which is really annoying if you feel like you did a good job at it do how do you handle criticism for yourself because um you know i you know i've, I've said my piece about uh, what i thought of the influencer but when you I mean, are you, uh, do you look into the reviews? I mean, I, I, I think you do just because of the fact you commented on the video that I did, but yeah. is that something that you do consistently once you have a new project release and you want to see what the what the general consensus is? Or okay. is it based upon, I'm really, I, I really, I really am proud of this project, so I'm going to see what people say about this. But if it's another project you're not, you're not so hot on, you probably not may look into the, what the critiques are for the film. So I'm curious to see what, what that process is like for yourself and how you handle the critiques that were either good or bad, how you handled it before and how you handle it now as the years have gone by where you felt like you've gotten better in conducting yourself during um, during those uh, phases, if you will. Yeah, if I don't like the project if for, some, for one reason or another, I tend not to look at the reviews because the reviews are probably going to say what I already think. You know, sort of. However, if I do love the project, um, I also don't look at the reviews because it, like, if I like it, it's like, well, that's fine. That's fine by me. And then I don't want to hear criticism of it because I liked it. Now, then there's a special kind of project, which I'm going to be totally honest with you, the influencer is right there, okay? okay? Where I'm on the fence. And I'm like, I really like some bits of this, you know, sort of, and I really like some aspects of this. Yeah. And there are other bits that I'm not sure about, you know, sort of, yeah. um, um, you know, sort of, I won't, you know, go into exactly what it is, but like, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm wondering if other people, what other people think. And, and that's that's the time. So if I really hate it, I don't do it. And if I really like it, I don't do it. It's only the middle ground, the ones where I'm like, do you know what? I was like, I like this project. Like I have an affinity for it sort of, um, but I don't know if other people are going to like it. Like I don't know. You know, maybe people are like this. Maybe people won't. I will tell you right now that people do like numbers wise. The influencer is, I mean, I'm probably... I'm probably allowed to say this at some point. Uh, the influencer, like, I mean, they're doing it number two. So, in fact, they're doing a number two and a number three. So, you know, they, they like it enough to do two sequels, not one. Um, Interesting. So probably, probably, probably shouldn't have mentioned that. I'm sure I'm not supposed to say that just yet. <laughs> but, um, but you know, they are doing it. And when they came, in, you know, sort of saying, yeah, we'd be interested in doing more of this project, you know, like, oh, okay, really? I was like, Interesting. Okay. And I was like, I, I saw the movie and I was like, yeah, I really like the way it looked. I think Jamie Bailey did a terrific job at yeah. uh, what he was doing, you know, given the time and effort that was made on it. And I really enjoyed uh, the project. I've worked with many of the people that were in it before, sort of. So um, I hadn't worked with Marie, the lead actress, and I, I thought she was uh, very good, very talented young actress. Yeah. But I'd worked with the other actresses, the two other actresses that are in the movie. I'd worked with them before. So um, I, I had a really good time making it uh, and stuff like that, sort of. But I wasn't there for all of the filming I left, uh, like, just towards the end. So I didn't see it all, all, all the way through. Uh, which was I, I, I had to go and do I went to go and do, film another movie, but I was already booked and this movie ran late. So um, in fact, exactly a year ago today, I think. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just before Christmas. Everyone was trying to get one quick project in. Um, but yeah, so I went to um, 
I thought it was fantastic, obviously, and, uh, um, as an achievement in the time and money that they made it in. But uh, it, I, yeah, it, to me, it was I was I wasn't sure. So yeah, I went looking for what people think. I don't know if I agree with everything people think, um, but like it was interesting. It, sometimes it's interesting to hear on it. I guess if you hear criticism four or five times, um, maybe there's a grain of truth to it. But you know, people's opinions are. Yeah, you know, the, the, you know, opinions are, you know, opinions are like arseholes. You know, everybody has one. It's not. It, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't mean it's right. It's just like. Right. And when people review things, they often feel that they have to say something negative. That's yeah. kind of reviewers. It always tends to be more negative than positive, just in general. Um. But yeah, it, you know. Yeah, and then if if someone what's interesting is if someone attacks me directly, going oh, this guy can't act. This guy is not a good actor. You know, he's not doing a good job. This isn't a good. You know, blah. blah, blah. That's always interesting. Uh, because you have to decide whether that person's right or they're wrong, or you did a good job, or there was something else not quite right there, or something like that. But as you get older, you get more comfortable with the person you are. Like uh, yeah. when I was young, you know, I, those sort of things would destroy you. You'd be like, "Oh man, I should just give up, and I shouldn't do this." But then people keep employing you, so you're like, "Well, you know, you keep getting jobs, you know, sort of." Uh, so, so you know, like, you know, like and that was, you know, that sort of uh, my father advice, you know, like, what? I go, hey, man, as long as they're still paying you, you know, keep doing it. You know, if you like doing it, and you know, just keep doing it. Don't worry about reviewers because review, no, in the end, no one remembers the reviews. Think of your favorite movie ever. No one remembers the reviews for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, sort of. Uh, and by the way, if you have a favorite movie, you should go and find the reviews and you will find a whole lot of negative ones. Yeah. You know, where, you, where you'll be like, I can't believe people think this about this movie. You're like, yeah. Like my favorite movie in the world, people won't know this one probably, is uh, Leon, The Professional. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. And, you, okay, yeah, you know, not, not everybody might know what it is, but I love it um, because it, it has such a great uh, trio of character, you know, from the, the, the hitman who's a good guy, the cop who's a bad guy, and the girl who is like, you know, the innocence of it all. Yeah. Um, and it's just beautifully blended, beautifully Luc Besson from just wonderful movie. Like, yeah. And it's like people go, it sounds like an action movie, and you're like, you know what, it's an action movie with a fuckload of heart you know sort of yeah. uh, like i mean you're really and you're subverted like the cop is the bad guy the hitman's the good guy you know sort of um there's there's a lot going on in that in that in an incredibly well-told simple story yeah, it's a lot of layers with that film i agree but there yeah. is a lot of layers of, and but yeah. then I've, I've gone and looked at people go right and i was like and gary oldman who's one of a british actor who plays yeah. is phenomenal yeah now Go and look at the reviews of that movie. And pe- there are people that don't like the movie. I don't know how they don't like the movie, but don't <laughs> like the movie. And then don't like Gary Oldman either. Sort of they go over the yeah. top. And you're like, and you're like, and you're like, it's incredible that people think that. Incredible. And I'm like, and they go, so there, do you know what? Don't worry about it. You know, so and you're like, yeah, you shouldn't worry too much about what people think, but you should be man enough to be able to hear it. You know, so I don't go out looking for it particularly. Uh, but if you do hear it and people don't like you, you'll be like, Okay, you know, so I'm sure you didn't, you know, sort of, but somebody somewhere probably did, you know, sort of. Otherwise, you know, I would they wouldn't keep giving me jobs. Do you do you get nervous? So, like in this case with the influencer, uh, when you when you heard my thoughts on the film or the various other people that have uh, uh, talked about the movie, uh, do you get nervous about it, or it, do you already have that mindset where you've developed the callus where you realize, okay, it's going to be good or bad. It is what it is, and I'm just going to hear what the general consensus is, because because uh, again, the one thing that I think a lot of people. I, well, I'm going to go back with what you said before, where you, you you mentioned before about some some critics, I agree 100% that feel the need to have to say something negative for the sake of it, or maybe yeah. not for the sake of it, but you know, but I have to find something that that could put an impact as far as why I thought this phone didn't work for me, and you realize it might be forced, but they make it, you understand where they're coming from, but it probably wasn't as negative as they make it seem like, if you will. So, but when you're when you're listening to that or you're reading it. Um, do you still get nervous about it or is it just more like uh, you let it slide off your back and then move on to the next uh, next beat? If uh, you will? No, I get nervous about it still. I think, uh, you know, the, as an actor, you inherently want people to like you, right? You know, so right. Like, you know, there's no, I don't think you don't care. The minute you don't care, I don't think, I think you should stop doing it. Um, you know, I mean, if it, like, if it didn't care what an audience thinks, you know, sort of, of anybody that watches it, you know, sort of, I, I think you should stop doing it probably. It's like, it's not, because then it doesn't sound like it's fun anymore, you know, sort of, mm-hmm. um, you've lost, uh, I know you lost heart or something, you know, you know, sort of lost that sort of spark in the eye. That's the sort passion, of thing. right? Yeah, it's the passion yeah. for it. Because if you don't, you have to care a little bit, um, actually. So when somebody says something negative, it's like, and if they say something negative about you or the movie or whatever, or both, you know, sort of, um, 
yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's still a little tough. But what you've got to do is not let your um, you, you you're not going to let your self be run by those emotions. You're like everybody has ups and downs, you know. Sort of everybody does good things, bad things, you know. So, but they could, you know, they're in their own opinion. And usually, I'm sure you've had this. Even this is not like related to just art and in movies and theater and TV, but in life. I was like, sometimes when really bad things happen and we do really bad, make really bad decisions, you actually learn a great deal from them. You know, yeah. sort of like I've had some disastrous movies and um, and I don't mean the actual movie. I mean, the experience of making it has been terrible, you know, sort of. Um, but it does teach you. Uh, you learn a great deal. Is that I must not do that again. I must, uh, you know, when I, when that comes around again, that sort of that sort of offer, that sort of project, I must say, no, thank you, you know, and move on. You must learn from it. Sort of. So sometimes you learn a, a great deal more from making mistakes than you do from successes. Sort of. So you yeah. must, uh, I think that's important in, in life and art sort of type thing. But in movies, you know, when, as you get older, you get better at accepting that, you know, going, hey, uh, not everybody is going to like me. Not everyone is going to like the movies that we make, and not everybody's going to like. Even if people like you, they're not going to like all the movies you make. You know, right. there's, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You know, but the race is kind of it's long, and in the end, it's it's only kind of with yourself. So as long as you're happy with what you're doing, and uh, you know, and you're not you're not be you're not out there sort of negatively hurting people, then it, it, then it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so when you when you because I'm I'm curious here to get more in depth with you about this because when you made the comment about uh fair critique on the film um i was curious about what it was that you had agreed on or disagreed on with what may i say i mean i'm not, I'm not asking it out of ego but i'm just curious about it because you're actually the first person that i'm curious to ask about um something they have said that sparked my interest as far as what it was they saw that they may have disagreed or disagreed with here because you know i'll i'll, I'll be frank too with the, the review that i did i was so I think oh, you, people, well, you probably didn't think you were going to talk to me eventually. No, I was I was looking forward to it actually because well, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll tell you uh, uh, when we're done recording. But the thing is, is that you know, this is not I've I have done this before where uh, I've talked to Derek um, Derek Presley and uh, Jason Starr. They they have made three films under the production company called Muscular Puppy. The first film, which was a film movie called White White Tail, which I thought was a good movie. And they did this, another film called Redstone. I saw the film, did not like it. In fact, I didn't want to do a review for the movie, but they reached out to me and they had said, hey, we want to talk about the film. And when they came on you know, to the Zoom call, I told them straight up, not to toot my own horn because that's not the case here, but what I told them, I did not like the movie. I thought the film was honestly at best just okay. Mm. But if, since we're promoting the film, you know, how do you want to go about it? Because I want to be respectful, but I want to make sure that you know, you guys know exactly where I'm coming from because I'm I'm not going to do that that thing about like, you know the movie's fantastic. I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but I want to know. But I want to know how you guys want to go. And and to their credit, we love the honesty. Let's just go with that. So for over two hours, we were talking about that film and various other things. But the honesty was there from the very beginning, so they knew where I was coming from. So you know, and that was them reaching out to me. Yeah. And and I've still been able to maintain communication with them from time to time, but you know, it's not it's something that I what I've realized for myself is that, um, you know, I'm I'm not it's not that it's 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 uh me trying to say I'm just being honest because I I, I I hate that 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 form of um expression, but I do I believe that if you're honest with the people you're talking to on the said film that they're working on, then they know that when you talk about it, you're not bullshitting them by saying you know this movie was fantastic. Yes, you know the actor was great and this and that. I prefer the openness here, but be respectful at the same time in the process where, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say you were terrible, but it could have been better, you know, something to that effect. Yeah. So when I'm, when I, so I, I'm, I'm kind of went off on a tangent, but when I was, when I'm, when I'm hearing you, when you, when, when I read that, that was where I piqued my interest. I, I got to talk to him because I want to hear what he had to say about my thoughts in the film, but also what else he's done, has he done along the way that I could see that where his progression is as an artist, as far as the act, and then I come to find out you direct and so on and so forth, where I have seen a few of your films in that short span of time, um, where I did see the differences as far as certain things you approach with your directing, obviously with your acting, when you're in the in, in front of the camera and films you may be directing or maybe have some small part in here. There's certain things I've noticed along the way that I personally connect with here, but then when I listen to your conversation, the way that you conduct yourself, Throughout the years, I can see the differences when you first were being interviewed ten plus years ago, and where you are with it now. Something had changed, but I noticed right away. So that's yeah. the reason why I wanted to get your thoughts on it. But at the same time, just converse with you because 
I found to be, I found your story to be quite unique, but because you are in a, an industry that a lot of people may not be fully aware of exists, which is the British industry, the film industry that I think is a, is a, is a, is a is a industry that I love very very much. There's a lot of British filmmakers that are coming out. Jesse V. Johnson is one of those directors. I thought when I saw Savage Dog for the first time a number of years ago, I was like, "This guy is amazing." And now his career has like gone through the roof, where he's gotten more yeah. work and about just right. going on and so on. So you know, it's um, yeah. I'm I kind of went off on a tangent, but I, you but that's but it's back to my original question. I was curious to hear what your thoughts are uh, when I mentioned what my critiques here. Yeah, no, listen, mate. There's no. I, I don't come on uh, to this. I, I, I like the honesty too, uh, and I don't come on to argue. Your opinion is as is valid as as anybody's opinion. You know that this is the wonderful thing about movies is that there's no wrong opinion. Right, right. People can hate it. People can love it. It doesn't matter. Uh, people can come at it however they want to. Um, you know, sort of. I my opinion on the movie is probably not worth anything because I'm in it. Do you know what I mean? I sort of. I'm not. <laughs> objective at all sort of so um and that's fair i'm not supposed to be in some ways um i don't also take it as an attack if people don't like it it's like well okay you know we tried something if you don't like it you don't like it you, right. you know, sort of, um, that's fine um and and as usual with anybody that's like level-headed anybody that comes at something is that actually if they sit and watch a movie that usually you know you like some things about a movie and you don't like others ultimately yeah. you may not go hey I didn't really like the movie. It was okay. You know, and when, when people say it's okay, they really mean that it wasn't, uh, they don't like it, you know, sort of, okay. <laughs> sort of like, uh, eh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, and that's fine. But usually they have aspects of it that they did like, you know, sort yeah. of uh, 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 type of thing. Sort of. So there's, there's always, you know, if somebody gives a movie a chance, there's always something in it. Usually that, I mean, within reason, but um, there is always usually something people do like in it. I mean, obviously if you're not, you know, I've had people telling me before that they really hate the movie. Uh, and then they later on would disclose that they don't like horror movies at all. And you're like, right, if you don't like horror movies, you know, don't, you know, you're not going to like this. You know, do you know what I mean? Not this, not the influencer particularly. But um, I've had people, you know, where like we're doing Butchers or one of these sort of gory, gory movies. Um, and you're like, well, obviously you're not going to, if you don't like that sort of movie, you're definitely not going to like, you know, it's all, you almost shouldn't review it because you're right. not the right person to look at it then. Yeah. I was like, obviously anybody that's picking up a movie called Butchers, do you know what I mean? They 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 do like that sort of movie, or they certainly like the genre anyway, sort of type thing. So you can't really review it going, oh man, it was terribly violent. You're like, well, the audience will hope that it's terribly violent. You know, like that's almost a, a stupid uh, criticism. I remember years ago, I read a review for a James Bond movie, and the reviewer didn't like the movie. It was one of Pierce Brosnan's last ones, and they called the movie really predictable. And they're like, right, okay. A lot of things you can say about a James Bond movie, mm -hmm. there's lots of them. But them being predictable is not one of them. It's like it's like, it's literally it's like well, of course it's predictable. James Bond runs into some guy who wants to take over the world, yeah. and he manages to defeat him with beautiful women and gadgets and a fast car. I was like, that's every James Bond movie. It's not predictable. It's literally what the audience want when they buy a ticket for it. They that's what they want, you know. Sort of, um, you know, sort of. So so to say that the movie is predictable is like. Well, okay, you can't really say that about that because that's like saying, oh, a science fiction movie. Yeah, there was too much of it set out in space. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, there was a lot of stuff in space. You know, and you're like, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, what? And they go, yeah, I, I wanted it to be more on Earth. And you're like, then stop watching science fiction. You know, sort of, it, it, it's, it's a weird criticism <laughs> to make. You're like, like well, and then don't watch it. Like, you know, so you're obviously not going to enjoy that if you don't like, yeah, you know. So somebody's always like, you know, like uh, my grandmother didn't like Star Wars because there's too many lasers in it, you know. So and you're like, okay, well, you, don't, you know, so she's never gonna like that thing. She goes, no, I don't like all that. I don't, I don't know, you know. And you're like, yeah, okay, but then don't watch it, you know. <laughs> Somebody once told me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this story. Somebody once told me that they hated White Collar Hooligan Three, the third movie, and they hated it much more than they hate. They hated number two and they hated the original one. And you're like, right. If you hated the original movie, why are you watching both sequels? Like, if I hated some De Influencer one, I wouldn't be watching De Influencer two or three. Do you know what I mean? I was like, well, you didn't like the original. You hated the original movie. Why are you watching the sequel? Obviously, it's the same. When it, whenever people make a sequel, it's like, well, it's the same characters and the same sort of story. That's kind of what sequels are. You know, people want to see a continuation of that story. They liked what they saw, and now they want to see a bit more. That's uh, you know, so but why on earth if you hated the first one, why on earth would you watch a sequel? 
you know, like to me, that's just stupid people, you know. So yeah. I was like, well, you know, so I don't know why people do that. It drives me insane. That that's the one thing that's that's the one time where criticism isn't like um, I I can't take criticism from someone like that. Like, not like yourself now. Your opinion is sort of informed and stuff like that. But obviously, you'll give a movie a chance and stuff like that. You yeah. know, so you probably have your preferences, but you know yeah. movies. But somebody who's like watches reviews a horror movie and doesn't like horror movies is like, well, then you shouldn't be reviewing it because it, the movie is not for you, you know, sort of. So, and you're like, well, no, but I'm still a reviewer, and you're like. Okay, but this movie is made for horror people, people that like horror movies. Obviously, if you watch the Hallmark Channel and only watch Christmas movies, you're not going to like this. You know, sort of, but then you were never supposed to like I'm not trying to sell you that movie. I'm trying to sell it to the horror guy who does like it. And he if he wants to read a review on it, he wants to read a review on it from someone that knows horror movies, you know, or something or appreciates the genre, even if they don't, you know, or is level headed about it, you know, sort of but you know, people are stupid. <laughs> I actually feel the same way too about what you just said there, but you know, here's what I, I was actually really curious about with you when it comes to um, not uh, to, to kind of just close out with the, the the critique aspect of it because I'm actually really curious about this with you. Um, when you when you start to okay, I guess I'm trying to see how I can ask this question here, but when you talk with somebody, and this because I say someone you know you're talking to an outlet, uh, someone who's on helping promote the movie, and you're on the platform. You're discussing about the person. You're just you're discussing with that person about the film. Do you do you have a sense, you know, a, like a bullshit sensor that you realize, okay, this person clearly did not like the movie, but you're still talking about the film. They're you know showcasing the yeah, you know, the great movie was like this and that, and you, but you can tell they didn't like the movie, you know, because yeah. one of the biggest uh, things that I've come across here, and I'm I'm sure you've come across as well too, is that um. You know, I, I I personally am the type of person that if if I get a screener, if I can if I have the ability to watch the movie more than once, I will do that because then I can let something sink in that I probably didn't think, let it sink in the first time. So that way, when I do a review, if I if I'm able to, of course, then I can give a much more uh, you know thought uh, thoughtful critique about why this and that did not work and so on, and and then I can f sift out okay if it's a, if I can't get into spoilers, then I know I can't talk about X, Y, and Z. But when you're talking with somebody that is promoting the film, they say have seen the movie. Do you do you start to notice about the 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 um, you know more or less the bullshit really? If you know that they're not they're they're doing their job, but it's clearly us and not watching. They're not into the movie. But when you talk with them, does that kill the enthusiasm a little bit for you, or is it just like it's just another it's just another talk conversation? I'm just doing my job, promote the film, or do you have a little bit more of an, of an sentiment where like I would like to I'd rather talk with somebody who is interested rather than somebody who is just pretending to be interested. Yeah. I mean, obviously I've, I've done a, a fair few of these interviews where I've yeah. seen, um, I've, I've seen where I've done interviews like not, not like this, but um, uh, where people haven't seen the movie, you know, yeah. so, um, and they'd, I can tell that they haven't seen the movie by sort of the things they say, you know, sort of, yeah. um, and they do, sometimes these guys are very busy guys and they're bigger interviewers and they run like, you know, they're doing it on like, you know, news channels and stuff like that. So, right. They haven't got time to watch the whole movie, but the, these guys may not have even seen the trailer. Do you know what I mean? They may not have even, uh, <laughs> they may not have even seen it. You know, they may not have seen anything. You know, so yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can tell by the questions they ask, they don't know what's going. They're like, "Tell us a bit about the story," and I know that they don't know. Yeah. You know, sort of. Um, now, that to me is worse than a guy um, that has seen the movie and doesn't like it and pretends he does. You know, sort of um, because you can, yeah, like you say, you can tell when someone doesn't like the movie. I'd kind of prefer that they said. They didn't like it, but obviously that guy is trying, he's doing, he's got a job to do. You have been invited onto their show to promote your movie. So him actually inviting, unless the movie is actually a review show, mm -hmm. um, it's usually just an interview with an actor, you right. know, sort of, um, and they, they're just interviewing you. So they don't want to be rude. So they go, they, they let, allow you to promote without them saying, and that I, I've seen, I've known when people do it, they're very skilled people that do it, I do it like this. They say, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm very excited to. Now, that guy probably has seen the movie and didn't like it, but he doesn't want to say he didn't like it. So he, yeah. the way he gets around that, and you, like, you see all these Jimmy Kimmels and all the, the, the big guys, that's how they do it. If they haven't seen it, if they hadn't listened to the album yet, if they hadn't read the book, they're like, it's next on my reading list. I'm so excited to read it. You know, and, they're mm -hmm. about it. and that's how they get around it. So they're still, because what they're doing is interviewing the person. They're not... Um, they're not providing a review on the film or a, or a critique on the book or the album that they just, do you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, and they're yeah. 
they're very busy people. Maybe they haven't got time to do all that, but they want to help you. So when you the exercise is promotion, they find ways to help you like that. So they go, well, I haven't, I have, you know, to be honest, I haven't seen it and I probably, you know, or I have seen it and I didn't like it, but they try and the way that they try and uh, G you up is they sort of say that they're very excited about it. Oh man, it must've been cool to be with, you know, whatever it was, you know, mm-hmm. sort of whoever the big household name was and they get you to tell that story. And that's sort of, that's useful because that does help promote the movie. And obviously what you hope is that you get a bit of genuine, dialogue out of them like sometimes when these guys go on the things they often tell like an anecdote a funny story or something you know like, and that helps people go ah, i don't know if i like this film or not but i like this guy and if i like this guy maybe i'll go see his movie right. you know so that's right. how, you know that's how when people do it. that's the old business you know uh, denzel washington said that before you know whenever denzel washington is in a movie he goes it's not denzel washington in a movie it's a denzel washington movie like people buy the ticket because denzel washington is in it you know, sort of, so it, it's a different way of thinking. You know, some people just see a Tom Cruise movie just because Tom Cruise is in it. You know, sort of, um, they don't really care what it's, they don't, they, all they need to know is, is Tom Cruise in it. And if Tom Cruise is in it, then that's good enough for them. So it's a different way of doing stuff. So people like to help people like that. You know, you're in love with uh, Tom Hanks's personality, Harrison Ford's personality, you know, whoever, yeah. whoever your A yeah. list actor of, of choice is, you know, you go, oh, I'll see anything with Meryl Streep in it. I'll see, yeah, because she's great. You know, so it doesn't matter what she's in. You know, sort of, I want to see a movie with Meryl Streep. And that's what people, you know, people, that is how people choose sometimes to watch stuff. So, you know, the thing is about about this here that I that I thoroughly en- did enjoy is because, you know, I, I, tr- I, I try to find something. I mean, I said before to you about, you know, if, if I watch your work, do I like the films that have come across here? And the answer is, is yes for me. You know, I haven't seen everything, but from what I've come across here so far, I have enjoyed, you know, I always say for the most part. Yeah, but then again, when I it's it's one thing for me to be interested in the project, but then can I still connect with the person outside of the project? Because if I like their personality, then I'm looking forward to see the next work because um, then I have something to look forward to because I I like how they conduct themselves about you know what preparation or whatever the case may be. But what was interesting for me, it, apart from you, com- you know, made, making that comment in the uh, in the review that I left there uh, here in the channel, it, it that was the the initial. Um, interest like okay i want to talk to this guy because I, but i want you know i want to talk to him, but let's see what he's done then i saw you know um riot which i realized oh i have seen this movie of you know a few whatever years ago as it came i think it might have been like what 2017 when i think the phone came i think yeah. i saw like 2018 19 somewhere around there so having seen that film and remembering the bits and pieces i have come across then i continue looking into other, your other stuff and then it was listening to your conversation in the documentary um i have to write it down again because blank slate blank slate yeah so listening to your uh, the various perspective of you know the, especially the British filmmakers when it came to how the industry was is right now in England but in the indie side of it here that was a part that really you know piqued my interest even further because I have talked to Jesse before on, on more than one occasion but you know because he's been based out here in the states for the last twenty plus years he's obviously much more Americanized and it wasn't until Scott had said hey. I got these two projects here, which he was more or less a gun for hire, but like with the exception of maybe Avenger, because he wrote that movie too, along with uh, um, Accident Man. But you know, that's him going back to his British sensibilities, if you will. When he yeah. comes to America, it's more Americanized than it is British, if you will. So you know, there's there's certainly a, a, a side of the industry that I that I'm a very big fan of that I I know enough about, but not a whole lot. So when I saw that documentary to hear the the British filmmakers' perspective about how they feel the industry is for the indie filmmakers, that was the part that was really unique for me to listen to because I've talked to a lot of American indie filmmakers here uh, with a few foreigners that base themselves out here, but to never actually listen to people who have um, actual um, production out of you know England, if you will. Yeah. So. To hear you share the the stories here, uh, and I know my questions were very long and convoluted, but you know I, I do think and talk at the same time, so I, I apologize for the elongated sure. questions here. But you know, I the fact that you've been able to share that here with me, uh, it taught me a lot about what exactly uh, has changed a lot for the industry. Because listening to someone like yourself, and then Jonathan Southcott as well too, I've listened to him talk where he was want to see the films that he wanted to make, which now and more is leaning towards the action side of here because the last film he just released, uh, Renegades, that just came out, um, was kind of like the indicator, like this is the trajectory for me and then you can expect more of this along the way. So 
it, it kind of gives me a perspective about, okay, so there are a lot more people or maybe not a lot more people, but people that have come through the ranks, if you will, in the English industry where they are more or less becoming a household name, maybe not the same in the same vein as like, you know, Spielberg, but certainly within the Indian community where people know that name and therefore can trust that the work that they're putting out there is going to be top tier quality stuff, limited capacity. But in some way, shape or form, they succeed in other areas where most, I would not say most, but a lot of mainstream films kind of falter in here. So there's a, re I think there's a certain sense of um, artistry that I, I'm starting to see a little bit of res a resurgence where the hunger is still out there, but we're seeing the hunger come from the pockets of, of the country that I think people don't realize exist. That is really important to take notice here because we've gotten a lot of great filmmakers that have come out of them. Like in this case, we're talking about England here. So when I saw Riot, um, and I wish I, I wish I focused more on this here with you, but that film to me was more or less an indicator about how I think the British sensibilities when it came to the realism of violence, especially because this movie is kind of loosely based on the the riot that took place in London back in 2011. It was an interesting insight to see that perspective of storytelling through the eyes of an English filmmaker with British actors in the British setting, if you will. So, you know, I think um, I'm hoping that with whoever comes across and listens to here, they would take the time in, in, to look into the various film works that are coming out of England, because I do strongly believe there's a, lot, a number of great filmmakers that are coming out of there. I mean, we have Edgar Wright. I mentioned before about uh, Jesse V. Johnson, just to name a few. Yeah. And I also think you're a good director too, because from what I've seen with Riot, there's a, that's the only film that I've seen so far that you've directed here that I've come across here. But from what I have seen so far, to me, considering I think that's your debut film, if I recall correctly. That's right, yeah. That was actually pretty good. So I have to give you a lot of credit for what you've done there because I was actually quite impressed knowing that that was your de debut feature, that with what you were able to accomplish with that film was really good. So now, knowing that you've done some other uh, films along the way after the fact, um, I'm looking forward to see what you have done with those respective films because I know one is a science fiction film and I forgot what the other one was offhand. I think it was a TV show, if I remember correctly. Mm. Um, so... I'm curious to see how you've developed as a director throughout the years coming off of that project there. So again, I went long wind here, but um, I, I'm so I'm hoping that maybe if you want to close out here as far as uh, what people can look forward to checking out here that you are able to commentate on here and anything else you want to say to kind of close out our conversation. Uh, well, no, it's been great having a conversation. You know, some of these, like we talked about, uh, some of the interviews are sort of uh, generic and this one wasn't. So I appreciate I appreciate your knowledge, to be honest, on the industry and stuff like that. Um, it's always good to have an informed chat rather than, uh, you know, me just filling in the blanks sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, with lots more to come, you know, lots more stuff coming up. Um, I'm very excited about uh, 2023. I have a lot of big, uh, big stuff coming up. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been, uh, it's, yeah, stay tuned. Watch them, follow me on uh Instagram or something. <laughs> You'll see. Well, I'll be sure to have the in the description down below all the links for your social media accounts so people can be on the lookout for that. So I'll have all that prepared for them to look out for that. Um, but okay, well, I guess in closing for the cameras, I, I do want to say thank you again so much for your time. Um, I know you. you had to go through a winter storm to get to your home to be able to get this done. So I appreciate um, you giving the time to do so here. Um, I am sure it was uh, not a fun experience to get to home, but I appreciate you <laughs> pulling it off here for me. And, and and uh, and allow me to have this conversation with you so for the cameras i want to say thank you and until next time cheers <laughs>